Today I'm going to talk about our work on the long equilibrium hyper uniform fluids. I mean, the title is Long Equilibrium Strongly Hyper Uniform Fluids with Large Local Density Fluctuations. And the subtitle is Towards Perfect Photonic Fluids. It means that actually the purpose of our research is trying to find a way to realize perfect photonic fluids or photonic liquids. So first at the beginning, I would love to give you a, a brief introduction on, I mean, let's say photonic materials. So uh, one of the most commonly used photonic materials could be photonic crystals. So they are essentially periodical structures that can control the flow of light in the same way semiconductor controlling the flow of electrons. Therefore, similar to the electronic band gap in semiconductor, in photonic crystal, we also have something called photonic band gap. So if the frequency of the light falls within the uh, band gap of the materials and this, I mean, of the crystals, then this light will not be able to travel through the materials. All of them will be reflected out. Then we will see a strong color. This namely is called, uh, I mean, structure color. So the structure color actually, I mean, exists widely in nature. For example, the, I mean, the, the, the I mean, this, <clears throat> the, I mean, the blue color of this uh, butterfly wing is also a structure color. Simply means this, in this case, this blue, this blue light is actually within the band gap of this microstructure of the uh, butterfly wings. So we see a strong, strong blue color. So because of this, there are, there are many applications associated. So for example, if you have a photonic crystal, we can think about to, to design a defect. We can create, for example, something like this kind of defects. They have light source over here. The defects, uh, then the light will always travel through the defects that you created. So this um, this means people people were trying to sell this as um, it's some kind of materials so you can control the transmission of light. But I somehow feel it's a little bit silly because if I want to just want to control the flow of light, I can easily use I, I can I can I can I, I can easily use my let's say mirror. I don't have to use use this very complicated materials. But actually, I mean photonic crystal, I believe they have much more important applications. I mean, compared to just to control the flow of light. For example, in my opinion, the most important invention in the last century is electronic computer. So in electronic computer, one of the most important devices is the electric transistor. So the basic structure of the electric transistor is like this. You have input voltage, output voltage, and have a controlling voltage. By controlling on and off of the controlling voltage, we can control the on and off of the output voltage in order to realize the zero and the one and all those computations. So in this sense, we can also do this by using, let's say, photonic uh, I mean, I mean, I mean crystals. Now here's one design of this photonic, so-called photonic transistor. So imagine you have a photonic crystal, then you can design the defects like this kind of cross junction. In that sense, if there is no light trigger in y direction, the transmission of light in the x direction is not possible. But as long as you trigger the light in y direction, the transmission of light in the x direction can be actually switched on. In that sense, we were thinking that perhaps one day. We, we may be able to, I mean, we may be able to make this high quality, I mean, photonic crystal to realize this this photonic quantum computer in such a way to use light instead of less electron to do the computation, which could be much faster, and also you don't really generate any, let's say, much of heat. <clears throat> The question comes to how to make those photonic crystals. I think in these days there are essentially two major uh, two major ways. The first way is the the crystallography. The idea is quite straightforward. Essentially, what we could do is just to use laser to make holes in the substrate of the materials. You just, I mean, in that sense, you can precisely, I mean, design the structure and location of the holes in such a way to precisely design the structure of the crystal that you want to have. This method is fascinating because almost there's no error because it's this, you just by design, you can make it very much precise. The issue is that the method is not very efficient because if you want to make a big chunk of materials, you need to make it holes one by one. It takes almost forever. So in that sense, there was another method was, 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 that was introduced, I mean, in past years, the so-called colloidal self-assembly. So in that sense, we don't really have to make this uh, materials right away. Instead, we can make the spewing blocks let's say beforehand, for example, colloidal particle of the size of 100 nanometers or micrometer. Then we can use, for example, DNA to program the particle-particle interaction. Then we hope that all of them can spontaneously form the crystal that we have designed. So this is something people have been dreaming um, because the method here is quite uh, I mean, quite efficient If you, I mean, in case you want to make big chunk materials. Uh, but the problem is that I mean, during this, this spontaneous crystallization of colloids, there are a lot of defects, 
And also in, let's say in crystal, if you have defects, defects must be a, let's say a green boundary. So either be a plane or a line, it's kind of extended structure. So which means that um, if, if let's say in your materials, if your defects percolate your materials, then the bandica will be gone. So in that sense, um, I, mean, I think, it, I mean, at this moment for, for colloidal self assembly in equilibrium, uh, we can hardly use it to really fabricate photonic crystals for, for, for practical use. So in that sense, we are thinking about, can we think about a new way to design, let's say a new type of self assembled uh, photonic materials because we still want a relatively cheaper way to do this experiments. At the same time, we hope the materials could be not sensitive to defects or perhaps perfect. So, I mean, like Obama, or, I mean, normally said, yes, we can. So here I would like to introduce this idea of Harper uniformity. So the concept of Harper uniformity was introduced by Saul Tugredo and Frank Steininger 20 years ago. So in that paper of, I mean, in, unless in this PIE paper by them 20 years ago, the original purpose was, to, was trying to find a way to distinguish the structural difference between random fluid and perfect lattice, I mean, perfect crystal. So by eye window, I mean, perfect crystal and random fluid are kind of different because this crystal, you have periodicity, you have rotational symmetry. Now people at the beginning were thinking that perhaps if you want to realize the property of crystal, you need to have periodicity and rotational symmetry. But around 40 years ago, people found quasi crystal. So quasi crystal has almost the same property as crystal. Most of them, you have band gap. But things that for quasi crystal, they don't really have periodicity. The only thing they had is, is rotational symmetry. So people are thinking perhaps this intrinsic feature for crystal is rotational symmetry. In this paper, they were trying to argue perhaps for crystals, the intrinsic feature is the uniformity of a system. For example, if you think about a system of random fluid, so here all the points are the position of the particles, then if you throw a circle of radius r into a system, at the time you can count how many points in this um, in the circle, right? So in that sense, if you throw a circle randomly many, many times, you will be able to calculate this mathematical estimate of number of points in the system. I mean, sorry, instead, I mean in the circle. At the same time, you can also calculate this mathematical estimate of number of points of fluctuations. I mean, in this, let's say, in the circle. So in the fluid case, we know that this number should scale with r to the power d. I mean, for random fluid. So here, the d is the dimensionality of the system. So if we do the same kind of operation for crystal is different, then this number of point fluctuation should scale with r to the power d minus one, which means crystal is more uniform. I mean, density fluctuation is smaller. But this kind of trivial, right? Because we know by i crystal, I mean, you have periodical structure, you have unicells, which means that if your circle big enough, the inside of the circle will be always the same. I mean, no matter where the circle is, the fluctuation always occurs just on the boundary. So of course, there's one order lower. Um, this is kind of trivial. But in that paper, they were trying to argue, can we have something called disordered hyper uniform structure? In the sense that we still hope the system is disordered, which means look like fluid, random. But this uh, but density fluctuation scale with, I mean, the number of points fluctuation scale with r to the power d minus lambda with positive lambda. So mathematically, this is equivalent to the case that the structure factor of the system is going to, z is, I mean, it's going to be zero when the when I mean when k goes to zero, <clears throat> so here you can see the lambda is a number. I mean, let's is a number to quantify the degree of uniformity. So when lambda goes zero, you go back to the random fluid. When lambda goes one, it goes to the extreme case of uniform, let's say, perfect lattice. So similarly, we can also check how fast s k is decaying to zero when k is small enough. So when k is small enough, you can always get some kind of power law. I mean, s k is scale with k to the power alpha. Then when alpha is smaller or equal than one, <clears throat> I mean, we call this weak hyper uniformity. Then when alpha bigger than one, the density fluctuation at a very big length scale scales um, exactly the same as perfect lattice. So in that sense, that for strong, strongly hyper uniform, uh, let's say this order system, the property is also familiar, uh, it's also very similar to the to the to the perfect lattice. I mean, to 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 I mean, the perfect lattice. <clears throat> So virtually, I mean, what this kind of structure look like? Here's a figure. I, so here I'm showing you three different, um, let's say, configurations. The first one is order lattice. The second one is random distribution. The last one is a hyper uniform disordered structure. So we here, uh, so 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 I mean, here here all the points are the position of the particles. The circle, I mean, number in the circle is number of points in the circle. So we see that for the perfect lattice, no matter the circle size, big or small, the number of point fluctuation are always kind of small. So, but if you have random distribution, no matter the circle size, big or small, the number of point fluctuations are always relatively large. So for hyper uniform, this, uh, for, for this all of the hyper uniform structure is something like this way. When the circle is small, the number of point fluctuations is similar to that of random fluid, but when the circle size is big enough, 
the number of point fluctuation is very small, it's actually approaching the limit of the perfect lattice. This means that for disorder to have a uniform structure, if you look at small length scale, it looks like very much like disordered, let's say, random fluid. But if you look at a very big length scale, at, I mean, if you go to big enough length scale, the uniformity of the system will be very similar to crystal, very much uniform. <clears throat> so this is a virtual understanding of what this hyper uniform structure does it look like. Uh, this paper was published in, I mean, 20 years ago. I would say in the first 10 years after the publication of this paper, not many people care about this hyper uniformity because the things that if you're familiar with 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 this um, the structure and compatibility theorem, the structure factor when k goes to zero is actually proportional in equilibrium. It's proportional to the autosomal compressibility of the system, which means that in equilibrium system, if you want to have a fluid phase, I mean, if you if you have a fluid phase, having this kind of thing goes to I mean, as k goes to zero, which means that your 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 fluid is very rigid. But this is not possible because for fluid we all have we always have kind of finite the compressibility, which means in equilibrium, if you want to realize this hyper uniform structure, you have to use very much long range interaction. Short run short run interacting particles will, will um, let's say will never give you a a a a, a hyper uniform fluid in a sense. Therefore, then this this thing was not interesting to the physics community at the very beginning. However, people realize that there are many things that we didn't really understand in nature were actually hyper uniform. I mean, just in the in the in the past maybe ten years. So here's a paper. I'm giving you one example of the uh, I mean, human beings. I mean, sorry, the eyes of animals. For example, for human beings, uh, let's in our eye, our, our eye essentially consists of a lot of different. I mean, a lot of like, photoreceptors. So for human beings, we have three types of photoreceptors: red, green, blue. So equal size, equal number. Then all of them are packed on this 2D plan of our eye. So eyes, you can imagine, is kind of I mean, it's a 2D plan. Then the 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 packing of all this photoreceptor must have two criteria. First of all, you have to go to, let's say you have to be high density. You have to, let's say the packing must be high density because the area of the eye is limited. You hope to have as many photoreceptors as possible. That's first thing. Second is that you hope your 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 distribution of the photoreceptors are kind of uniform, which means that if you look towards different direction, the brightness, the brightness will be almost the same. You don't have problem with 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 brightness. So if you have human beings' eyes, we have three types of photoreceptor, equal size, equal number, we can easily pack them into a hexagonal super lattice. It's, it's a highly compact and also very much uniform because it's kind of, it's, 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 a, it's a crystal. <clears throat> this, this, this is for most of animals. But we also know that for some animals, like chicken or birds, we know they have better eyes than what we have. For example, for chicken, they have five types of photoreceptor. So five types of photoreceptor, equal size, equal number, in 2D plan, you can't really pack them into a high density super lattice of crystal, right? So in that sense, people real people people found that for I mean for, <clears throat> for the chicken, each species of this photoreceptor, I mean the structure factor is actually hyper uniform. The structure factor goes to zero when K goes to, I mean I mean when K goes to zero. And also overall all the points is also hyper uniform. People call this multiple hyper uniformity. Therefore, the disorder, the disordered hyper uniformity can be understand can be understood something like this way. In some cases, we know that this optimal solution must be a crystal, I mean perfect lattice. But in let's say in let's say sometime the geometric constraint, because of geometric constraint, we can't really um, reach a crystal in the sense of, of, of the high density packing. Then nature tries to compromise. Tries to compromise in the sense that to 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 form a disordered hyper uniform structure to mimic the the property of the crystal. So in this case, this is called the multiple hyper uniformity. In my opinion, is a disordered version of super lattice. So they have the 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 similarity as of 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 of, of uniformity like like perfect I mean perfect crystal. At the same time, it's also high I mean highly dense like it's a highly dense packed. So this is the the, the thing people found previously in nature. Then also people will realize that for hyper uniform structure, if the hyper uniform degree is very high, like strongly hyper uniform stru uh, I mean, structure, um, they also have very similar property to crystal. So one thing is that you have photonic band gaps. For example, here's one of this example. So here, I mean, the structure over here is a disordered hyper uniform structure. Then here is, uh, I mean, for for different frequency of light, the electromagnetic wave is kind of different. For example, in the in the figure A, we see the 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 the, the electromagnetic wave can propagate in the system. But but still localized. You can, you can propagate a little bit distance. They couldn't really, let's say, 
I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, go through this entire materials. But if the, I mean, I mean, I mean, but if, I mean, I mean, but if this this the frequency of light out of the range of the band gap, it can be freely diffusive in the in the in the entire system. So this means that if we want to make photonic materials, perhaps we don't really need to make crystal because crystal is difficult. You have a lot of defects. You have grain boundary. Maybe we can just make disordered Hubble uniform structure. The advantage is that. The structure is disordered by nature, which means that if you have a defects, the defects will be like a hole. So the property, the the, the effect of defects will not propagate through the system. This is the idea. So the question is still come to how to make them. As I mentioned before, the Hubble uniform structure is actually uh, is actually long range correlated. So if you want to make them using equilibrium system, you have to use long range interaction. So long range interaction is very difficult to be realized in experiments. So therefore, uh, we I mean, unless we are tuning, so so we are we are we are um, I mean we are tuning another different way, called a random organization. This random, the idea of random organization was proposed by uh, Paul Chaking and David Pine, more or less like 15 years ago. So when they were proposing this thing, they haven't thought about anything to do with hyper uniformity. So the system that they were looking at is a very viscous liquid. They put colloidal particle into a system. I mean that's just you can. Uh, if you don't do anything, because the liquid is very much viscous, the particle should stand still. Then they start to do the periodical shear. So when the shear strain is very small, after one period, the particle move, then all of them go back to the original position, right? But if the shear strain big enough, after one period of shear, some particle will collide, they move to different places. Now here, this kind of particle, they call active particle. So the fraction of active particle as function of shear strain is more or less like this, start to be zero, then when the number go over a certain threshold, the number start to be positive. Then there's some there's there, there, there some increase. Then this, I mean, when this, uh, I mean, when the fraction of active particle remains zero, we call this inactive state or, or, or absorbing state. When the active when, when the fraction of active particle become become finite number, the system is actually is, is actually moving. So people call this active state. So there is a transition point called absorbing transition. In this paper, there were actually many focus on absorbing transition. They were saying this is a kind of new type of non equilibrium transition that falls into some kind of universality of I mean, let's say of, of some 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 transition. Then recent year people realized that for the um inactive to active states. The tra um, at the transition point, at the subject transition point, the system is hyper uniform. The structure factor scale with, I mean, the uh, uh, I mean, let's scale with k as k to the power 0 0.45. So this, to me, is in my opinion, is the first time we have ever found hyper uniform structure in a dynamic state. Actually, in the in a long equilibrium, let's say, I mean, critical point. So this is called critical hyper uniformity. Uh, but why this happened, to be honest, we still we still don't really uh, fully understand. <clears throat> So in our case, we are, we are, I mean, we are taking another approach using active colloids, uh, because I have been working on active colloids for I mean for some time. So I'm thinking so with the system that we are using is called a circle swimmer. Essentially, it's active hard is 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 kind of hard spheres. Then they then they do this kind of circular like 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 swimming. Then the equation of motion can be described by using this simple let's say uh, um uh, Langevin equation. So the velocity depends on the particle particle interaction or uh, this self propulsion and random noise. And angular velocity depends on the torque. And a random noise. <clears throat> so the so, so so I mean in this sense, we focus in the at um, uh, let's add the case. This the temperature goes almost zero, which means that uh, if if we don't do anything, particle will will I mean at, at low density, the particle will just do this independent circular swimming. <coughs> so in this case, there are two controlling parameter. The first is the radius of the circular motion, and also uh, we have another parameter is the packing fraction. This is two controlling parameter. So then we do simulation. We um, let's say we check this long-term diffusivity as function of packing factor, and we see the number start to be zero. Then when the number goes over a certain threshold, um, this the system start to be diffusive. We I mean jump up to be a, I mean to have a finite diffusivity. And also if you do uh, uh the, 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 if you uh, decrease this packing factor of the system from diffusive system uh, from from active state, we can also have the same thing. But this we have a history. Um, let's say we can we can clearly see there is a his, there is a hysteresis loop over here. So. Uh, so, which means that at certain intermediate density, for example, uh, phi equal 20, um, um, 0 0.22, um, the system can stay either in active state and inactive state, uh, depends on where you start from. So this we I uh, so we think it's still kind of a swapping transition, but it's, it's kind of different from the previous case. Um, so we the transition could be actually first order. <clears throat> This is the first thing. Uh, next thing that we, what what we did is moving to the active state. So we're looking at the system at high density, phi is 0 0.4. 
and also uh, with with different radius of circular motion r over here. So we see that with increasing r, the system become become more and more diffusive, and also and, and also at the uh, same time, um, the 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 structure factor when q small enough is always a scale as q square, which means that it's actually very strong of uniformity. Um, the the density fluctuation should be the same as perfect crystal. And and, and another thing is that with increasing r, we see that. I mean, besides there is there is something happening in home scaling at a very at 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 a very large length scale, there is intermediate length scale. I mean, we have a peak at some I mean at some range of Q, and there is another scaling, a uh, scale as Q to the power minus two, which which somehow suggests that there is kind of critical phenomena because uh, I mean we, we know if you if you approach to a, to a critical point, you typically have a your 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 SK will scale with Q to, Q to the um Q to the power minus two. I mean, <clears throat> so in this case, somehow shows that there is a critical phenomena. So virtually the system looks like this way. If, if R very small, the system is small and is uniform. Then with increasing R, we do see the system start become more and more spatially heterogeneous, a system from dynamic clusters because of this peak. At the same time, we see that at a very big length scale, the system is actually very uniform. So you have something uh, that this uniformity is exact same as 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 perfect lattice. So essentially in our simulation, we see two things. First of all, um, uh, first of all we see a giant local density fluctuation because we see clusters. Secondly, we see it uh, globally, we have a strong hyper uniformity. So then we try to understand what happened here. So first we 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 construct a dynamic mean field theory. So here's mean field theory for two I mean for both this density field and this this orientational field. <coughs> this equation this this for Planck equation is almost the same as this uh um, convention I mean this 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 the mean field theory for active brownian particle. The only difference is here we have a torque term. There was only one talk in the sense that uh, change something, let's say in the let's say in the equation, and 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 also we we assume the effective the effective less velocity as function of mu. Sorry, sorry. I mean as 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 function of rho is more or less changing with rho linearly. So which means this is kind of a first approximation. But we also validated in our simulation this. I mean this this relationship is is actually right. It's actually very accurate for the for the, I mean, for the range that we are studying. From here, then we can just simply do a free transform to 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 the needed response. Then we see that then we can get this dispersion relationship. Then from here we can get the growth rate of the mode. So essentially, the growth rate of the mode k as function of q. I mean, I mean, and kappa as function of q is more or less like this way. So when when I mean when q is small enough, the kappa is always negative. It's a negative constant times q squared. But for certain but but for certain range of q, we have another function. Then this um this range has a possibility to be positive, uh so so in that sense we can use um this look like um but I mean I mean let's say by tuning this uh packing fraction or, or or tuning the R I mean some some range of the Q corresponding to the I mean I mean I mean the kappa could be positive which means systems start to be unstable at a certain uh finite length scale some some I mean some length scale, I mean this is actually very similar. To the micro phase separation people have already seen and um, commonly seen in the polymer system. So here we call this uh, non equilibrium micro phase separation. You have a class, you have a transition, but this fluctuation only happened at finite length scale. Now from here we can actually predict where systems start to be unstable. Essentially, this this I mean the blue curve. Then we can compare with our computer simulation. So here is 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 a symbol from computer simulation. The 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 I mean the dash curve is a fit of of, of the um, I mean phase boundary from our theory. So x axis is is is, is packing fraction. The y axis is a sigma over r. So sigma is the particle size. <laughs> so here the uh, I mean the color of the symbol is the height. Of the first peak of the structure factor, so it means which means that if number is large, which means we form a cluster somewhere at a certain length scale. So we can see that when when R very very large, I mean transition is actually rather sharp. We start from zero, suddenly we jump to something very large. I think this this, this I mean, I think when, when when R comes to infinity, this jumping shift from zero to infinity. But our system is finite, so you have you can only jump to finite number. And and also we see that with 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 um, <clears throat> I mean with decreasing R. This transition becomes smoother and smoother. So then, but and but still, this 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 the transition can be more or less described by our theory. I think this is really shows that the transition itself is a micro. Uh, the the reason that we have a dynamic cluster because you have kind of uh, less instability. You have some kind of let's say micro phase separation, and and also in our theory we we can I mean we can actually pinpoint this. I mean the the length scale will system start to be unstable. We can compare this with our computer simulation. Essentially, it's, it's a Q star. So here the symbol are from simulation. So here the symbol here is the uh, position of the first peak in our structure factor. 
then this this stat curve here is 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 a vertical prediction. So here we don't really fit it, but the look I mean I mean not exact same, but I would say close enough because in our theory that we are still have quite some approximations. It might cause I mean certain I mean certain differences. So this first part, the second part is that we we also see I mean globally at a very big length scale the system is 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 hyper uniform. Let me try to understand it. In this sense, we still come back to the disappointing relationship. So we can see the kappa as function of q, something like this way. So when kappa is small enough, the oh, sorry, I mean when q is small enough, the, I mean, the kappa is always negative constant times q squared. So this means that at a very big length scale or very small q, there's only a diffusive mode in the system. Therefore, the dynamic equation of the system at a very large length scale can be simply, I mean, let's say, written as this diffusion equation. And also in our system, we don't really have any noise. So we look at this um, temperature at zero case. So the system and all the noise should come from the particle-particle interaction. So it has been proven by, by Dobleving and Daniel Hexner that if your noise can conserve the certain mass of system, your noise should be able to be written as a second order derivative of certain function. Then you can plug back this, this noise to the equation, to linear response, then we can obtain the structure factor is indeed should be a constant times q squared. This this exactly the same as what we have seen in our computer simulation, which means that at a very big length scale, the reason that we can have hyper uniformity is because of the spatial type of the noise that conserve the center of mass. <clears throat> then the next thing that we want to show is that because we know that in our system they have two different types of density fluctuation at different length scales. At small length scale we have giant fluctuation. At a big length scale we have Completely superpressed, hyper uniform. Let's say, let's say, I mean, the fluctuation. So there should be a length scale to separate these these two different fluctuations. Therefore, we plot this the structure factor as function of q times r. R is the radius of, of, of the circular motion. We see all the points at the low density can can be I mean can be collapsed into a single curve. At high density, the system already forms some kind of dynamic clusters, so we couldn't collapse them. But still. The the length scale, the Q, where systems start to have the hyper uniform scaling happen almost all at the same point, which means that the length scale actually above which the system is hyper uniform is on the size of the circular, um, circular motion of each particle. This is something that we um, I mean I mean separating the different different fluctuations. Uh, next thing I want to mention is the effect of solar noise because at the beginning we were focusing on the, on, on I mean on on I mean let's say zero temperature, but in reality. You always have certain temperature, or let, let's say you you, you 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 always have some 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 noise. So in that sense, we want to make up a simple theory to account for this effect. So in that sense, we consider a system at high at at, sorry, at low density in the sense that the noise in the system can be decoupled into the two different terms. First term come from particle particle interaction, which essentially is a second order derivative of a certain function, and, so, uh, and then <coughs> then 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 plus another noise, uh, which essentially uh, is a solar noise that can be written as first order derivative of certain function. It doesn't really conserve certain mass, but still they conserve the, the number of particles in the system. And we can still do the same, same kind of trick of linear response. We see that this, I mean, I mean, let's in this case, the structure factor uh, should be equal to some kind of constant, I mean, plus a quadratic term. Then we can use this formula to fit with our computer simulation with, I mean, find, I mean, small Q, I'm sorry, I mean, small temperature. And we do see that this, this, this I mean, structure factor can be can be reasonably fitted. Then from the fitting, we can get the structure factor S at Q equals zero, is S zero. Then we can put, I mean, then we can put S zero as function of effective temperature. So here, effective temperature defined as temperature over the cell, cell, propulsion, I mean, cell propulsion. So we can see that the symbols are from, from computer simulation. I mean, the I mean the dashed lines from, from theoretical prediction is I mean, a beautiful linear relationship. This is actually very interesting because if we recall the, uh, hyper, and let's say, uh, I mean, the hyper uniform system in equilibrium, say, um, a crystal. So for a crystal, <clears throat> the hyper uniformity only exists at zero temperature, I mean, exact hyper uniformity. So if you have certain temperature, the particles start to move, then you have these phonons in the, I mean, let's say in the crystal. The phonons will destroy this hyper uniformity at a very big length scale. Therefore, for a crystal, a structure factor S0 is also a, a finite number. But at low temperature limit, S0 for, for thermal crystal also change with temperature linearly, which means that in our case, what we have seen here is actually a dynamic ground state of a long equilibrium system. So if you have some more temperature, let's say if you have some more noise, we're essentially leaving this ground a little bit, then I mean, but still the hyper uniform degree should be should be should be should be should be conserved at 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 at, at I mean at certain length scale. 
And interestingly, over here is that the 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 effective temperature defines temperature over this cell proportion. So we don't really need to make my temperature goes to zero in order to have have uniformity. I mean, at the beginning scale, the only thing, the only thing perhaps we have to do is to change the the activity. So it makes system more and more active in such a way we can push the Hubble uniformity of a system towards bigger length scale. And lastly, I want to mention about how to realize them in experiments because when I was um uh. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, I mean, the paper was published a few years ago. In the, I mean, in the past, uh, I mean, uh, two years we do see experimental realizations. I mean, following this this kind of design. So first thing we we uh, we 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 want to say one, in my opinion, one of this, I mean, the potential system that can realize this could be using the system a, of Steve Granik and Eric Lauten. So they were essentially using this kind of ionized particle. One side is metal. So in that sense, the particle is very heavy. It's, it's actually very heavy. They are they are they are sending it into the to the bottom of the sample. That in the y, I mean, in the in the in the d direction, they can put an AC electric field, I mean, to generate some kind of pushing force on the particle. Particles start to move. At the same time, they use a rotating magnetic field in the xy plane to give the particle a torque. The, the particle essentially are doing this kind of circular motion. So all the particle essentially having the same kind of chirality, same as this 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 rotating field, but they have a phase difference of of pi. I mean, let's say 180 degree. So in this this I mean, in this paper, they were mainly focusing on. Uh, in the system, they have some. They, they were trying to say there is kind of effective temperature. We have very much like temperature in the slow equilibrium system, but we are trying to say that in this system, in the range, in the parameter range, that they didn't care. The system should be hyper uniform. Therefore, we did our simulation. We do see that, um, I mean, less in this kind of call uniform, they, they call the random fluid phase. The system is more or less like this. I mean, the I mean, red and the blue are these two different are, are the particles with, with two different, let's say, phase. I mean, the initial phase. But then the, the this uh, the I mean, structure factor of the system is indeed I mean, scale with q to the power. Uh, I mean, let's say uh, two. So it's it's the same thing as what have, what we have seen in our let's, let's, I mean, in our system. Uh, and and I mean I mean I mean I mean besides this we also see, uh, let's I have a friend in China so Professor um um, um He Peng Zhang, so he just happened to have a system of this algae. This algae, I mean, it's kind of how to say, uh, let's say mutated. They 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 are, they are doing something to change this this algae. They only have one flagella. In that sense, if you put this algae into a air water interface, they will swim in this kind of a circular fashion. Now, what he has done is that he, he I mean, I mean, he looked at a paper that say perhaps we can use this system to try this idea of circle swimmer. Then they put this into air water interface and slightly increase the density of the system because the system over here you can't really go to high density. If you go to high density, the algae will jump on top of each other. Then it doesn't work. They, 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 can, they can only increase slightly this, this this density. They found something like this random. I mean, I mean this is 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 kind of random structure. And they check the structure factor is indeed hyper uniform. I mean, when Q small enough, is Q to the power 0.75. Uh, but we know here the exponent is different from from I mean from what we see because because since that uh, I think this experimental side is actually much dirtier. They have they have many other effects that we didn't consider in our in our simple model. Besides, there was another recent paper by uh, the group from Agon National Lab. Um, they use another model. Uh, sorry, they, 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 were, they, were, they were using another experimental system. The concrete roller is this kind of uh, a snowman-like particle. They have they have one. They have I mean, they put a particle in this, uh, let's say, uh, in in this electric field. The particle can do this kind of let's say, I mean, I mean, circular swimming. The phone system can have different different phases, but uh, but <clears throat> I mean, but all of them. The system is actually hyper uniform, and also uh, similar to 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 what we have seen in our simulator. They all, I mean, they also see a peak, which means that they can form dynamic clusters. Then, uh, I mean, at certain length scale, then but at small q, they have hyper uniform scaling. But still, the slope is different from from what we predicted. And also, in zero case, they didn't find hyper uniform fluid at low density. They only found hyper uniform fluid at at, at 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 high density. So I think that in the experimental system, they are. Other noises that we didn't consider, for example, how, and this this hydrodynamics and all other things we didn't consider. This actually changed the system because I think in the in the in the in the in the low density case, this 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 the other noise and kind of dominate. So 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 you don't have the hyper uniform scaling. But if you go to higher density, you do have some kind of hyper uniform scaling at 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 at, at, at I mean at at bigger scale. So just a little summary. So this, I mean basically what we see is that. We see a strongly hyper uniform fluid in system of active score swimmers, and we see at high density the system can have this um, local giant, I mean, giant local density fluctuation, and also the system, this the global hyper uniformity still persists, and this suggests new possibility of designing active colloids 
for fabricating perfect non equilibrium, let's say, photonic fluids or photonic liquids. And also in this paper, actually, we were focusing on the, um, let's say, overdam system. Actually, somehow are realistic because if you think about fluid, you always have inertia. Then in the, in, let me, let's say, in the in the second paper, we tried to, we extended this concept to really consider really, um, let's say, uh, 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 let's say this this real flu system with active uh, with inertia. So we formulate this hydrodynamic theory for the non equilibrium half uniform system. We show the reasoning you have half uniformity is because of this reciprocal excitation. I mean, <clears throat> so in that I wanted to mention whether these things never really exist in nature because I when I was uh, I mean finding this thing I was kind of I'm kind of excited because we do see this two completely different kind of fluctuation existing in one system, but but at different length scales. Then we try to degrade it, and then, 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 then we thought we are this really new. Then we degrade it. Then, then, we, then, then we dig into the literature. Actually, the Harper uniformity, the concept, actually started in cosmology, because when, uh, when and people call this super uniformity. So actually, if you if you simulate this this um, our our using uh, if you simulate our our universe of using this kind of cosmology model, you will notice that entire universe after Big Bang is Harper uniform, but after Big Bang, as function of time. We have gravity, so gravity will induce this gravity induced condensation by forming galaxies. Therefore, you will have a lot of peak appears at a certain range of q. Then, as function of time, the peak is moving to is I mean, it's moving to smaller, smaller q. It sort of means you have bigger and bigger density fluctuation. There's something I would say very similar to what we have seen in our macro swimmer system, but at a completely different length scale. It's the biggest density level that we can that we can think about. So in the end, I will actually mention that there is plenty of room at the bottom. So instead of tuning this interaction between particles, if we can tune in the kinetics of the system, we, we have the opportunity to realize many novel structures that we couldn't really find in this, I mean, let's say in, in, in equilibrium systems. In the end, I would like to thank my PhD postdoc and collaborator for the contribution and you for your attention. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ran, uh, for this wonderful talk. So we have some time for questions. So Ron, in one of your uh, uh, slide, you said that uh, for getting hyper uniform structure, you need long range interactions. Yes, uh, long range interaction. Mode? Okay, maybe I can go back. Let me see. I need to go back to the slide. Actually, the the the, the I mean the reason is that. Uh, I mean, there, 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 I mean, there are different ways of understanding this. First of all, if you think about it, um, based on the definition, this number goes to zero means in equilibrium the system is very rigid, right? Mm -hmm. So if you want to maintain the rigidity, really rigid rigidity for for this solar system, you need longer interaction, right? Increase number of uh, more uh, neighbor basically in some sense. Yeah, yeah. The another thing is that if you if you if you if you look at if you look at this direct correlation of the system, you will notice for Hubble uniform system uh, for 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 Hubble uniform system, the direct correlation function is actually long range. It's different from the conventional correlation function. It's direct is direct correlation function. It's long range. So it's another thing you need to use if you want to have a Hubble uniform system. You must be long range interaction. Hmm. But for critical point is different. For example, if you think about this, this 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 um this random cross packing. People say also it's, it's kind of as a um, I mean that's I mean that's this 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 hyper uniform, but I think for random cross packing is different because it's kind of still similar to the orthopy transition. It's a transition point. It's kind of critical fluctuation. I mean it's critical hyper uniformity. This the scaling is different. But you are saying that in in a, in, a, in a mean field limit, uh, so if you have a system, hypothetical system which has a very long range, uh, infinitely long range interactions, mm -hmm. are the construction uh, hyper uniform? Oh, it depends on the interaction. Depends on the interaction. So you have I mean, if you want to have, I think in the past, maybe in the in the uh, maybe let in, in the in the past twenty years, uh, Togata Group was mainly focusing on designing different kind of hyper uniformity. I mean, for I mean, using this I mean, design interaction for that. So the one thing they were trying to uh, uh, mainly focusing on is called stealthy hyper uniformity. It's not like this. It's, it's similar, but in the sense that it's similar to crystal. Is is and the structure value is not only zero at zero, but also zero for a range of small q, then from zero to some q. In that sense, they, they, you can if you want to realize that you need to design this I mean, corresponding, let's say, let's say, let's say um, this interaction. But the resulting interaction is always long range. That's for sure. Uh, hi. So hi. in the algae system where you did the experiments with, uh, did you get to change the radius of the orbits and see if it uh, actually became more of that hyper uniform scaling or which one? Sorry, you mean, you mean experiments? 
uh, in the experiments with the algae that you showed uh, oh i didn't do the experiment <laughs> let me let me let me let me go there this the experiment was very, actually very much subtle because um they can't really increase density too much because things that this one is in the air water interface if you increase density too much the particle the particle this this algae will jump out of each other so they have to be just touching each other system is slowly moving but not too much too, I mean I mean too high density that's the reason they only see how uniform scale they didn't see another cloud I mean they I mean they didn't see another peak because in our case it's, there should be a peak I mean somehow in, in I mean, let's say small Q they didn't see that they only see how uniform scaling uh, right and one more thing in the simulations did you actually have a fluid in between or uh, because here you have a fluid mediated interaction also between yes. neighboring okay. similarly so what did I consider <laughs> And it so, doesn't seem to care about whether you have a fluid or not. The scaling. I guess something like this way. So that's something. Uh, I'm, I'm less. I guess. So this this effect. Our simple model is one reasoning. It should be this 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 reciprocal excitation should generate hyper uniform scaling. At the same time, the system has more noise. You have hydrogen ion, whatever that we didn't consider. This noise, some of them is actually long range. For example, hydrogen dynamics. Then this long range long range. Let's say noise or, or, or interaction may change the slope of scaling. That, that, okay. that, that's what I understand. Okay. Thank Especially you. if you look at this one as well, this, they have similar, also have hydrogen dynamics, I guess. Yeah. Also scaling is different. See here is one. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, hi, Ran. A quick question hi. So about finite size effects. So mm -hmm. if you go to larger and larger systems, do you see any changes in the uh, low-Q behavior? Uh, we didn't show here. Oh, uh, let me see. Well, this I was... is always the typical question that comes up. That I yeah, mean... we had we had a free having. I mean, having this question. <laughs> uh, actually, something like this. Let me, let me show you. So people were asking that if you go bigger system, do you see this one goes down? Sometimes it was it's finite size. Maybe you just don't have it. But actually, we did try bigger system. Did, I I I I didn't show the figure. Then this orange curve goes down. But but the blue curve still goes up because the system still still too loud. I think we couldn't go to infinity. So I think the final size um essentially like this way. So we need to make sure that the hyper uniform degree this hyper uniform scaling starts when system is still big enough. Because of the length scale involved. Yeah.